Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and today we're going to be taking a look at the Kenner Superpowers toys from the mid 80s because this is a toy line I get asked to cover an awful lot here at Toy Ploy and I thought it was about time that I actually got round to working on some. Now I've not been able to find an awful lot of these figures. Over the years I sort of pick up the odd one or two but generally I pick up the uh, Toy Biz versions. Those seem a lot easier to find and as you can see I've actually managed to pick up a few of the uh, Superpowers ones. So today we're going to be working at uh, making replacements capes for these because that seems to be the main thing that is missing. Obviously the super features and the sort of the little uh, actions and gimmicks that they ha all have uh, tend to break as well but really if you're collecting them on, them on display you need the capes so I thought that would be a good place to start. And so far I've only actually managed to find one original cape for my collection and that is on this Superman here. So this is an original uh, Kenner Superpower Superman and he has the cape in place and you can see with the nice little emblem there on the back but Batman is supposed to have a cape so is Robin and so are the two uh, Toy Biz uh, movie era versions of uh, Batman in the background. So today we are going to make Superman's cape, Batman's cape and Robin's cape but because we're making a blue Batman cape we might as well make the black Batman capes as well to go with those. Now the capes on these have an interesting sort of uh, construction to them because normally with sort of these old capes there would be a bit of elastic or something that sort of wrapped around the neck but on these Superpowers ones they have a little plastic ring inside the neck portion of the cape. You can see there if I sort of squeeze it you can see that it's a little sort of round or c-shaped bit of plastic and that clips onto the neck and that is what holds the cape in place and it holds it pretty well. So the first thing we do before we design the capes is we've got to work out what we can make this little C section of plastic out of. Now I was initially thinking that I could buy a bit of tubing or something like that and sort of cut a small bit off it and then I was just rummaging around in my sort of boxy bits and uh, sort of things that I use for fixing toys and for working on various different projects and I just came across a biro. Now this is a standard biro you can pick these up anywhere and I think I bought these for another project because I'd already used the lids for some things but I've, so I've got a whole pack of these biros. I think I got 10 for 50p or something really cheap like that. I took the lid off and I thought oh that is perfect this piece of plastic from the lid will do just the job because it looks like it's about the right diameter so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to cut off about a sort of two millimeter ring of uh, this lid and we'll see how well that works because I think that might just do the job so knife here and I'm going to cut a small amount off this plastic is nice and soft so it's really easy to cut Obviously I've got lots of them so I can make lots of these rings really easily for every single cape that I need. So there is a tiny ring of plastic from the lid. I'm going to cut that just down the middle so that we can open it up. And look, you can see already we've got a sort of C section of plastic and we'll see if that clips on to the neck here. Just open that up and look at that. Perfect. So that is what we're going to use as the basis for the neck ring. Now to make the cape we obviously need a pattern and it's much easier to make the patterns if you have a cape to hand. So I'm lucky here because I have Superman's cape and I can use that to uh, design something on. For uh, Robin's and Batman's cape uh, I have to say a massive thank you to John Aspinall who very kindly sent me in some scans of the capes and we're going to use those to make those. But the first thing we want to do is make Superman's cape because we can make sure that this works properly and once we know the technique I can then use that same technique to work on Batman and Robin's ones. So what we do so we get the cape and we get a ruler and we start measuring everything because you just have to make sure everything matches up and everything is the right dimensions. So I've already done this and you can see here this is the pattern that I've made making measurements off of this cape. It took me a little while and it takes a little while to work out how I want to construct the neck portion of it because I could take this all apart but I don't really want to as this is the only cape I had. So I sort of worked it out as best I can and this pattern is what we're going to use to make the cape. Now I've taken this into Photoshop and I've made a nice neat version and we're going to use that as our basis and if you want to do this yourself then go to toyploy.com and download the nice neat pattern 
that I have made and we, you can follow along and make your own cape as we're making one here today. And here is the nicely printed out version. Uh, and what I've done with this is I've uh, put some double sided tape on the back of it and I've actually just sort of stuck that onto my trousers a few times to take the uh, main sort of part of the stick off because you want, don't want it to be too sticky. And we're going to be sticking it onto this fabric. Now this fabric is called Toy Knit. It's not the same as uh, what they used originally but it's a fabric I like using. It's the same style of stuff that they use for uh, vintage Star Wars capes. I just like the finish of it and I've also found a very sort of good supplier of it quite recently so I have quite a lot of it in stock and it also comes in absolutely beautiful colours that are perfect for making these capes. You can see here I've got some yellows for Robin's cape, got some reds, I've got a nice blue for Batman's cape. I'll put a link to uh, where I buy this from so if you want to get some for yourself uh, do go there. It's not the same as the original cape I say but it's because it's got this sort of nice uh, sort of uh, velour type finish to it but if you want to find your own to make it more accurate then please go ahead and do that. Uh, for me this is just perfect. So as I say here is the pattern with some double sided tape on it. I'm going to stick this onto the fabric, make sure it's nicely lined up with the way the weave goes. And I'm going to cut this out and we can then start putting the cape together. Now we have the cape cut out we can start constructing it and that's where the pattern has an extra little bit of detail on it. You'll notice there's a line across the top there and that is important because that's the area we need to fold down to make the little pocket where the little bit of plastic goes in. So we're going to fold down about that amount so you can see there we end up with about a centimetre at the top and you can see here on the original cape that we also have to fold in the sides because uh, it's sort of been double sewn so you get this little sort of uh, overlaid bit on either side. So what we're going to do, fold that down and then I'm going to sort of try and match what this cape has. It ends up with a bit of a wedge shape in the middle so I want to sort of fold it about like that, maybe a little bit more. I'm just going to do this by eye because this, I don't really have any sort of definite plans of how we're going to do it but it's something like that I think and now we can start sewing. And I'm not going to put the bit of plastic in just at the moment I want to sew about halfway across and then we can insert the plastic so you want uh, it just makes your life a little bit easier if you don't have the plastic in place to start with. So I have a needle and thread here I've got the cape folded over just going to start sewing and we don't need to be massively neat because the red thread gets hidden quite nicely by the red of the fabric. But you still want to go as neat as you can. And once we get about halfway we'll then insert the plastic and do the other side. So I think that's going to be about halfway. So I'm going to get one of the little pieces of plastic that I've cut here and I'm going to try and sort of fold it a little bit flatter so I can insert that into the little pocket that we've made at the top now. Push that round. That's going in alright. And now this gets a bit tricky because we've got to do the same sort of folding that we did at the start but onto a curved shape. So I'm going to just take that a bit and fold that down. Make sure it matches as close as we can. Yeah, I think that's good. And now I can continue saying but I've got to sew around a curve which just makes it that little bit more tricky. Like so. I'll just trim off these bits of thread and we can test this on the figure. So here's the cape and here's the Superman figure. We'll just see if that holds on. Well it does. That seems to work quite nicely. That uh, fits really 
really pretty well. That's a nice colour cape as well. I think this uh, original cape that I have here is a little bit faded, so this one is just that little bit brighter. But it's obviously still missing the Superman emblem on the back of it. And to add that, we're going to use the same technique that I've shown quite recently on a video for uh, restoring a G.I. Joe Dr. Mindbender. And what I've done is I've recreated the logo. You can see here this is the Superman logo. And I've printed this out onto some uh, transfer paper that you iron onto fabric. And we're going to iron that onto some thin sort of white cotton material. Now the reason that we, we iron it onto cotton is because this requires the white to make the colour sort of pop out of it. If you were to iron this straight onto this red, you wouldn't get the yellow as bright as this. It would be a very meaty colour. So I've ironed this onto some white cotton and it ends up looking like that. You can see it's reversed because uh, you lay this face down. So that looks like the wrong way around and this is the right way around. So we now have a nice Superman emblem there. And all I've done on the back of it is I've stuck some double-sided tape and we can now cut this out and we'll stick this onto Superman's cape. So I'm just going to carefully cut around the logo like so. There we have the logo. Just trim that up a little bit more. I can see a little bit of excess white that we don't need. So there is the logo and if we now remove the double-sided tape backing like that. I'm going to use the original cape just to line this up. Do we want to? Actually it's quite high on the back of the cape. So you can see there that's actually a pretty reasonable Superman logo. Now I know some people have said that this cape is actually too short on the original figure, so you could easily modify my pattern and add an extra bit there if you wanted to make the cape longer. I've tried to make this close to the original, although the fabric I've chosen is not uh, sort of particularly close to the original. I just think that looks quite nice. So there we go, there is Superman's cape. We can now move on to some of the others. P O Y P O L L O I. Now Robin's cape is fairly similar to Superman's cape. The only difference is that it is slightly shorter. So all I've done is I've taken the pattern that I made here for Superman, I've modified it slightly and uh, shrunk it so it's just a little bit shorter. And we're gonna use the same sort of techniques to make it. It doesn't need a logo on the back of it. We've just got to make a yellow cape. Now I've uh, ordered in uh, different fabrics as I showed you at the start and I have two different shades of yellow here. I'm gonna make one from each. I think uh, Robin's actually this more sort of muted color of yellow, but I've got a nice vibrant one as well. And as I've got two Robin figures, this is the Superpowers version and this is the Toy Biz version. I thought I'd make one of each. Again, same exact techniques. I've just got this printed out here. I've got some sticky back uh, tape on it. So I'm going to use that to stick it onto the fabric. I will cut out two of them and sew two uh, completely and uh, we can stick them on these figures. The same little plastic rings work just as well on here. So here's another bit of the pen top. We can clip that around. This is the Toy Biz version. You can see that clips around really nicely. I'll put this onto the Superpowers version, which has almost exactly the same shape neck. And you can see that clips on as well. So it's going to work perfectly well for both of these figures. All I've got to do is get cutting and get sewing.
And here with the two finished capes, I put the lighter fabric one on this original uh, Kenner version. You can see there, that matches quite nicely. The uh, little bit of yellow that's left on his collar, that's a pretty good match in colour. And then I've put the slightly more vibrant one on the Toy Biz version, because the plastic and paint on the Toy Biz version, as you can see, it's just got a little bit more of a vibrant colour to the yellow they've used. And I think that works uh, quite nicely. It's quite a nice match there. So uh, really just pick the uh, fabric that you want and the sort of colour that you want. Uh, you can sort of mix and match it as you see fit, but I quite like the sort of more muted one on the Kenner version and the slightly more vibrant one on the Toy Biz version. Now we come on to Batman, whose cape is just a little bit more complicated, mainly because of the way it has to be cut. The top section of the cape is exactly the same as the other ones. It has the same sort of little neck rings, but the bottom has the, all of the sort of the bat wing pattern to it. And that was a little bit harder to work on, uh, just because I don't have an original one. So I do have to say thanks to John Aspinall, who very kindly scanned in uh, his original cape. And from that, I was able to make this pattern, which is as close as I can get. And you can see how sort of detailed the bottom part of uh, the cape is top section is exactly the same and this works in exactly the same way as the other cape so we have to cut this out sew over the top section and also fold in these sort of side bits as well so the cape ends up more of that sort of shape uh, and again for fabric I'm going to be using toy knit uh, I've picked up some black uh, toy knit so this is the black version you can see it's got the same sort of uh, finish to it um, and I'm going to be using that for these uh, toy biz versions which are from the movie and I've also found this nice light blue which I think is a fairly good match for Batman so you can see that's quite a nice colour match uh, so I'm going to be using that for Batman's cape again this is toy knit so it's a uh, got two different sides we can see there's a sort of nice brushed version on this side and then it's a little bit sort of shiny on this side uh, it's not the exact fabric but uh, I do like this stuff so let's basically get cutting and making it'll be the same process so I'm going to stick this onto both of these uh, cut round them and then uh, we can sew up the top section and see how well they work so let's just get making <laughs> And here we have Batman with the uh, new capes attached. So you can see here we have the lighter blue cape on the Kenner version of uh, Superpowers Batman. That looks quite nice. I did actually make a darker version of that just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, there you go, that's a sort of slightly darker blue version. But I think uh, the original would have been a much lighter blue like this one to match the lighter blue paint on uh, Batman's body. Uh, but you can really go with whatever sort of uh, colour you like. And then here is the Toy Biz version of uh, the movie sort of style Batman. And again, there's the 
black cape on that. Uh, I think again on this one the cape might actually be slightly longer on the movie version so you may need to modify the pattern just to make it a little bit longer but I'm certainly happy with how that looks. It's, it uh, does look very Batman with the sort of nice sort of bat wing pattern on the back of it but uh, if you want to go and modify that then I would uh, do it. It's certainly not going to be hard to modify the pattern uh, and again all the patterns will be available on toypoloi.com so if you want to do this for yourself go there and grab them. With the addition of the capes the superpowers figures certainly look a whole lot more presentable and it really isn't that much of a job to make them all. It takes a little bit of time just to cut the uh, fabric out into the right patterns and the sewing is still fairly straightforward so I would say if you want to have a go do it's certainly not the most complicated of jobs I've done. Uh, the one that takes the most time is obviously the Superman cape just because you have to make the emblem on the back of it but even that isn't uh, that complicated. I've shown you how to use the uh, iron on material many times before and it does work particularly well on things like this where you've got to add a little emblem on the back of it. Uh, so I need to say a massive thank you to uh, John Aspinall who helped uh, supply some of the cape scans as I've mentioned before and also to Hamish Chapman who was the person who very first got in touch with me about restoring uh, superpowers figures and he very kindly sent me this Batman and that is what started me off sort of picking them up and uh, sort of adding them to my collection and at some point I will get around to doing more fixes on these uh, but I just need to find a few more of the figures before I do that. If you want the patterns then go and grab those from toypoloi.com and if you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.